Welcome to the Woman of the Bible series. Today is Monday. We are studying Priscilla in the Bible. Amen. For those of you on Instagram, I actually have a slide deck that I put up on Zoom. And so even though you can't see it, I will do my best to try and also feed you some of that communication so you're not left out. But if you want a more interactive session, you are welcome to also join the Zoom. And the link is in the bio. God bless you. Let's go ahead and share the stream and be a blessing to as many people as possible. Today, we have a little icebreaker. I think we answered the question question already, right? It was, the question was what two colors mix to make pink, right? What was the answer? I think it's somewhere in the chat, right? It uh, is some, red and red white. And white. Yes, yes, right. And so um, we're going to have some little prizes for people that win, win all these little quizzes, right? So we're going to be tallying up points here. God bless you. But we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about Priscilla in the Bible. Uh, when I did the flyer, most of you asked me why we had Priscilla and Aquila, because Aquila is actually a man, specifically her husband. And it's because the Bible, uh, there's something about Priscilla and her husband Aquila. And, and I couldn't talk about Priscilla without bringing in the husband Aquila, which is interesting because typically, uh, or at least the way uh, the makeup of the home or family is designed, it's typically the husband and the wife, right? Or we say the people of XYZ family. But when you look at Priscilla in the New Testament, right? There's a lot of reference to her first, her name coming first, even before her husband, right? And it's critical. And that's why I, I, I made it as Priscilla together with Aquila, which is her um, husband, right? And it's important for us to understand the role she played because she was a great leader in the early church. And I know in the Old Testament, women didn't have these kinds of uh, prominent uh, presence, right? When they describe them, a couple did, right? Uh, but in the New Testament, we see a very vital role that women played in the New Testament church. And Priscilla is one of those women, right? And so um, as you as today, there's about eight things that I'm going to have a study about. Uh, Dr. Kufi, you can keep it moving. Today, there's about eight things that I want us to study about Priscilla. But we are going to do the first uh, the first five today, and I will give you the other three, God willing, next week. I want us to study her identity, number one. And if you're writing, if you're, uh, if you're taking notes, I want you to write this. Number one, her identity. Number two, her background. Number three, her marriage. Number four, her character. Number five, her assignment in the New Testament church. Number six, her craft or her trade, right? Number seven, her workflow. And number eight, her time management. And in today's series, I'm going to have what I call a light bulb moment. So after every presentation of the each of these eight things, of which we're doing only uh, five today, there's going to be a light bulb moment. And the light bulb moment is really for you because you might be wondering, I don't know Priscilla. I probably don't even care for Priscilla. I care for my life and what I'm going through right now, right? And that's legitimate, right, in, 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 in many ways. And so there's going to be a light bulb moment reflection for you so that you can extrapolate some of these things I'm teaching about Priscilla and begin to see your life through her lens, see what you can draw, see what you can pick up, see what you can apply to your own lives and what it means for you, okay? So who was Priscilla in a nutshell, right? Point number one. So she was a woman, in case you're wondering. Aquila is the husband, so Aquila is a man, but Priscilla is a woman. She was a well-respected uh, Christian leader in the early church, right, uh, during the time of the apostles, right? Um, she's known to have hosted even church services in her home, right, uh, in, in Ephesus. But initially, she didn't start out to be a church leader. As a matter of fact, she was a tent maker, someone that made tents. And I think somewhere in the first part of the uh, slides, I put a picture of uh, a tent in case some of you are wondering what, in case some of you are wondering what a tent looks like, right? She made tents, right? And um, Paul recognized her work ethic, right? And, and also her gift. So her work ethic, her gift, and her love for the church began to flow into what she began to do in the church. But in, initially, she actually appeared on the scenes as somebody that was a trade woman. She was an entrepreneur. She was a businesswoman, right? And so I want to 
I, I felt the need to underscore that identity because I know a lot of people start off thinking of themselves or other people as, well, this person is a doctor and this person is a lawyer and this person is that, and I'm not any of that, right? But, but you have to understand the construct of people. People don't just become something overnight, right? Um, I, I had somebody make, a, 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 I wouldn't call it a joke, even though they called it a joke. And they said, uh, when we say people are men of God or women of God, right? We fail to recognize that they are men before they are men of God, right? They are women before they are women of God. They, 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 they were who God created them in their innocence, in their, excuse me to say, their nothingness, right? In their frailty, right? Nobody came on the scenes as a full-grown human being. Even Jesus came on the scenes as a, as a baby, right? We see his birth. We see his delivery. We see his uh, teenage years. We see his adulthood life. We see even his death right? And so the, everybody has, a, a, has a, 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 a life path, if that makes sense, right? And so she was a woman, an everyday woman like you and I. She had a business or a career. Most of you have jobs you do, right? Um, um, let's move. We can move on to the next slide here, right? And so I, I, I want to really underscore that part. Now, this second part is something I don't want you to miss. I'm going to teach you about her background, Backgrounds are very, very important, right? But backgrounds are important in the sense that they point to where we are going, right? So it's a background, but it sets the stage for where you are going right? Especially if you're a kingdom person, it's very it's very important that you don't, you don't get stuck in the back with your background, right? It gives you a ground. It gives you a foundation. It gives you a framework from which to work right? So it, it, it gives you grants, right? But it doesn't limit you to those grants, right? It just gives context to where you are coming from, what you carry, what you possess, and you can take all of those things, combine it, right? Use them as tools to propel you to where you're going. Now, Paul, right, uh, was, was in a place uh, in, in Athens, right? In, in modern day Greece, right? Paul leaves Greece, and this was in Acts chapter, I believe, I think Acts chapter 18 or so, right? Acts chapter 18 um, is where uh, we're seeing this, this history of this woman, right? So in Acts chapter 18, right? Um, uh, Acts chapter 18, I believe, uh, starting from about... Um, starting from about 16 or so, right? The Bible lets us know that Paul left Greece, right, and went to a place called Corinth, right? She went to a place called Corinth. Now, at the same time, this couple, which is Priscilla and Aquila, right, Priscilla and Aquila, the Bible says that they had been uh, driven away from Italy, right, because there was a, there was a, uh, 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 there was an emperor at the time, right, whose edict uh, demanded the expelling of certain people from Italy, right? And so uh, uh, Priscilla and Aquila had to leave Italy and come to Corinth. So this couple met Paul in Corinth. I want you to understand that because people keep crying a cry of disadvantage. People keep crying a cry of, well, I don't have what Rudy has, right? I, and I, and I, I didn't go to the school she went to, right? And I don't live where she lives, right? It, it's important for you to understand that Paul came from somewhere and this couple came from somewhere and they met in a certain place. It's very important. Originally, I'm not even from the United States. Originally, Pastor Obi is actually from Canada, raised for about 20 years of his life. He only moved to the U.S. these last few years when we married. So he, he, we're not even from our native home, if you want to call it that way, right? And I think on this, on this series, we've done enough justice to women who came from all kinds of backgrounds, and we saw where God took them. So I think this is a no-brainer for all of us. And most of us, I, I believe, right, I could be wrong, but most of us, I believe, come from different parts of the world. Probably few of us are originally from the United States or whatever country you live in. So Paul came from Greece, right? And this couple came from Italy and they came to settle in Corinth, right? And so that's where they met, right? Now, when they met, um, the Bible says that Paul, right, uh, and, 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 and this couple began to make tents, right, in Corinth because Paul himself was a tent maker. He was making tents to make money to support the full-time ministry, 
when he had begun. This couple was making tents as their business. They went in ministry. It was just their business, what they were doing. They were, they were saved, right? And they were part of the early church, but they weren't necessarily ministers or leaders in the church as we would consider ministers today at the time. And so the Bible says in um, right Acts chapter 18, verse, I believe, uh, Acts chapter 18, verse 18, right? It talks about the fact sorry, Acts chapter 18, verse two, right? The Bible says, Paul met uh, a Jew named Aquila who had recently relocated from Italy with his wife, Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. And so they, uh, the Bible says that Priscilla and Claudius were tent makers. And so Paul stayed with them so that he could join their business and make tents with them. Paul needed that to support his ministry. And they also needed that to make a living in Corinth. The Bible says that um, a, a time came Paul couldn't afford to keep making tents. The Lord was demanding so much of him. The ministry was demanding so much of him. He had to leave his job, which is tent making, to go and do the ministry full time. So the Bible says in Acts chapter eight, 18, verse 5, that when Silas and Timothy came on the scenes, Paul left tent making and devoted himself exclusively to the work of the ministry. He was going around preaching and teaching people. He was testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Messiah. And he was, he, he, he was just focused on helping people, counseling people, teaching people, raising leaders. He stopped. But his initial encounter with, was with this couple who were tent makers. The Bible says when he stopped the tent making and went into full-time ministry, this couple in Corinth, right, uh, helped to form some of the churches in Corinth at the time. And Priscilla was a pioneer when it came to this. Now, not only that, Paul had to leave, uh, 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 Paul had to leave Corinth to Syria, right? And he went to found a church in modern day Syria. That was the Ephesus church, right? He went with this couple and this couple helped him also build churches in Ephesus, right? Uh, we see it again in uh, 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 Acts chapter chapter 18, right? The Bible says that uh, um, Acts chapter 18, I believe from verse from verse 12 onwards, right? We learn about uh, from verse 12 all the way to 18. The Bible says Paul stayed in Corinth for some time and he left his brothers and sisters and went to Syria together with Priscilla and Aquila, right? They arrived at Ephesus, right, and left Priscilla and Aquila to build and found churches there. And then Paul again left. So Priscilla and Aquila were working together with the apostle. Paul left and left them in Syria by themselves, right? And the Bible says that they were building churches over there, right? Now, while they were building churches over there, they came into contact with leaders, they came into contact with other people. Remember, these were people that were sojourning from Canada to US to Nigeria to New York to uh, Connecticut to Texas and so on and so forth. But any place they went, they made them, themselves of good use. They availed themselves, right? Most of you have known, I know you have moved from places to places. I was telling you guys that Originally, of course, I was um, I was born and raised in Ghana, right? I came here for, for college in Massachusetts, right? That's how I met uh, my father and the Lord, Pastor Thomas, who is in Connecticut, right? So he, he, he was in Connecticut. I was going to school in Massachusetts. Massachusetts is pretty close to Connecticut, right? So I went and submitted under him for about four years. He raised me. He taught me in the things I know today, right? And then I left. I moved away from New England and went to upstate New York. Actually, I went to the city. I joined a different ministry there at the time, United Bethel Pentecostal Ministry, Reverend Cookie played a critical role in our lives at the time, me and a group of friends at the time, right? Raised us, taught us, gave us an opportunity to teach, right? Put us on platforms, right? Taught us how to pray, taught us how to lead. You know, after two years, I had to leave. I went to, I told her I want to go to pharmacy school. So she released me. I went to upstate New York. I went there, I met Pastor Sam at uh, the uh, Church of Pentecost, right? He raised us, me and a, a couple girls at the time, right? Literally invested in us, poured into us. I think he put me on my first preaching ministry at a girl conference that he had at the time. I think this was in 2015, 
right, or something around that time. So when I finished, I told him, Pastor, I really need a job. I want to move to Texas. He said, Aisha, I said, yeah, I really feel the Lord asking me to go to Texas. He said, that's fine. He released me, prayed for me, and the church said goodbye to me, sent me away. I moved to Midland. I moved to Midland, stayed there for about six years with my husband. We joined another church. And this was because most of the churches I was in, they didn't have branches in the cities I was. And they weren't necessarily willing to start branches at the time. And so my pastors, thankfully, actually told me, when you go, go and find a good church and submit yourself there. Just because you don't have a branch of the church you go to, we would love for you to continue our vision. Right. But while we don't have plans right now to start a branch of our church where you're going, don't fall away from the faith. Don't get complacent. Don't sit back. Plug yourself into a ministry. Right. And so what's actually funny is that all these pastors I've served under actually know each other, because whenever I would move, I would move with the instructions. I would move with their blessing. I would move with them. And so in Midland, we're there for about six years, right, under Pastor Miller. Most of you know, we served under the Redeemed Christian Church of God, built Winners Fellowship for them, right, a youth ministry. And then most of you know about, what, four months ago, we, we, we told them the Lord was leading us to move to Dallas, right? So we just moved to Dallas about three months ago. Most of you saw the church blessed us. They sent us in a ceremony. And then here we are today, by the grace of God, founding Impact Citadel. So everybody has a journey. Everybody, I'm sure if we were to open the floor right now, most of you have come from, you know, uh, uh, being part of a choir, right? Uh, uh, singing in one part today, you have a music album, right? Or you served in children's ministry, right? You continue to do that. Maybe you're raising other leaders in ministry. Some of you are were, were started off as employees, right? At your place of work, right? You were promoted to managers. You've managed teams. You've built people. You're training people. Some of you learned something on the job. Now you've opened a business, you've started uh, some, some sort of business with it, right, where you are running your own thing, you're running your own uh, business, you're running your own program, right, some of you are starting out, some of you uh, feel called to just do what you're doing, because the Lord is using you maybe in ministry in a different fashion, and if you were to climb up the corporate ladder, maybe it will take you away from that assignment, there's a place for that, there's perfectly a place for that. Because Priscilla was a tent maker. We see that explicitly. No question about that. Woman of God, Wendy, uh, Pastor Wendy Asari, it's good to have you. Uh, I want to acknowledge and honor you. Welcome. Welcome, right? And so the Bible says that they moved, right? And they now went to, so Paul actually left the couple, right? And they were doing, they were building churches, right? And the couple returned to Italy and went back and were doing the same work in Italy again. And the Bible says that they had people that were mentoring. They came across a guy called Apollos. The Bible says in Acts chapter 18, right, verse 24, that there was a guy called Apollos, right? He was a learned man, right? He knew the Bible very well. He knew the scriptures very well. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord. But unfortunately, he only knew about the baptism of John. In other words, he was only, he didn't know about the Holy Spirit. He didn't know the move, the New Testament move. He didn't know the wave. The Bible says that, it was Priscilla and Aquila that took this guy in and began to mentor him and teach him. So they were involved. Remember, they came from Italy as a tent makers. They went into church building. They went into hospitality. They went into partnership with Paul. They went into coaching and mentorship. They went into race. So when you see some of these modern day women, this, this move is not new. The Priscilla's embodied these things way in the early church. These movements are not new. The expression of these movements might be new, right? Because people have laid dormant for so long, but these things were embodied in the early church. That, that's why you, 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 you cannot sit on your gift. That's why you cannot afford to fold your fingers. You have to be plugged in the community. Human beings are not independent. We are interdependent. Very important right? They took Apollos and mentored him and taught him because they realized he had gaps in his knowledge. He had gaps in his knowledge. The Bible says Priscilla would invite him to their home and they would explain the scriptures to him. Acts chapter 18, verse 26, Priscilla would invite Apollos to their home and they would be teaching him the scriptures properly so that when he goes to minister and preach, he would have the right understanding of the word of God. This is, um, it blew my mind when I was reading it. I don't know anybody this spoke to, but I said, wow, this was already done in the early church and women were pioneering this movement, right? And the Bible says that not only did they return to Italy, right? The couple also led church services in their home, their own home. And I'll show you in scripture, 
right? Uh, um, I think it was past, my pastor I was speaking to in Buffalo that told me that one of the things that actually helped the Pentecost movement a lot was these cell, cell uh, they call them cell, uh, somebody cell helped me, meeting. cell, what do you call them? Cell meetings. Cell, cell meetings, cell right? Meetings. Cell, cell meetings or cell groups, right? Yeah. I think they have, yeah, yeah, cell meetings, right? And And because what happens is that we did that in Buffalo because the winters were so harsh. And so sometimes pastor would have us gather in areas. So all of you that lived on Niagara Street, which is where I was, would all meet in Deacon, uh, uh, Deacon Edwards' home, right? And then those of you that lived, at, you know, maybe in Chittawaga, you all would meet in another person's room. And when we would come on Sunday, in our little groups, we were so taught, we were so empowered, we were so, you know, they were so powerful, I remember when I was going through difficulties in pharmacy school, it was my little cell group. I think they even got together. They got, they, they, they raised some money for me. I couldn't pay my tuition. They helped me with some of my textbook. They, they, you know, I, I would feel down. I would feel discouraged. Even as a woman, I was going through uh, seasons of, um, uh, what do you call that thing? Uh, insecurity, you know, about my identity. I, I I was just having problems, just understanding myself, what I was even doing there at a point I thought it was the most, it was just the wrongest mistake to even decide to go to graduate school because everything was coming at me so bad, right? These cell groups really helped me a lot. And Priscilla and Aquila had, they, they, they built these things. And, and honestly, one of the things, honestly, if you're from Winners Fellowship, you're watching, I think you, you know this thing. One of the things that helped Winners Fellowship a lot was these meetings. We could not have survived COVID if we didn't, if we didn't switch up the way we were doing the ministry. We couldn't because students come, they go. Students, they move. They are, they are like, I call them sojourners. They come, they pick their backpack, they are here. Tomorrow they are there, they are transferring here. It's very hard to, to, to manage them. And it was these small groups, especially our virtual small groups, that's what kept us going. So they're so powerful. And I know this thing does not sell because unfortunately we are raised in a construct that only has recognition for a mega church. And there's a place for that. In fact, we know Jesus was the pioneer of the mega church. If you ask me, when you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, he had 5,000 people following him. So he started this whole movement even before all these preachers of today's times did. But there's a place for you in your small group. There's a place for you in your local church. There's a place for you in your career space. There's a place for you in your giftings and in your talent. That's what I want you to look at personal life to recognize. They were leading church services in their homes right? Uh, I think this was in, um, I put the scripture on another slide, but um, this was probably in somewhere in first Corinthians, I think chapter, chapter 16, right? It says they were, they were having these church services uh, uh, in their home. First Corinthians 16, verse 19, Paul said, I want you to greet for me, Priscilla and Aquila. They always open their home for church meetings, Oh my God, I, I read it and I said, wow, there is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new under the sun. And the Bible says, not only were they doing that, Paul actually left them and went to Antioch. So there was a, a time came, they separated. That was also very powerful to notice. So they didn't move with Paul forever. Their assignments diverged. But by all means, you can tell it was a peaceful diversion. It was a harmonious separation. It's unfortunate that, again, we are raised in a construct where if two people separate, they have to be at loggerheads with each other. They have to hate each other, right? The pastor has to hate the person that left. The person that left has to hate the pastor. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, right? Paul and Priscilla parted ways. And the Bible says they were, they, they were doing so well that Paul wrote letters and said, greet Priscilla and Aquila for me. Because during the time of ministry in Corinth, in Ephesus, they opened up their home. And I've not forgotten what they did. I believe if they were not on good terms, they wouldn't have been writing letters. They would have gone on Facebook and said, she left my church. I'm a curser. She left the small group. I'm a beat her up. She did this. She, she, she ain't going to heaven. Right. And, and I, I do understand some people are, are very dishonorable. They dishonor leadership. They dishonor the church. They dishonor authority. They are arrogant. They are prideful. They don't know how to leave a place properly. They don't know how to leave Egypt well. So they don't possess Canaan and they are frustrated with the leadership of Egypt. Honey, it has nothing to do with Egypt. It's the way you left. So there's a place for that. 
but I'm talking about people that pour out their heart for an assignment and a time comes when they have to part ways. And I could see the leadership example from Paul and I could see the, the, the exemplary reception and duplication of that exemplary leadership from Priscilla and Aquila too, because the Bible says they kept on doing amazing things for the church. That's beautiful. That's the essence of the kingdom. That, that's what the kingdom is about. It's not about the way you feel and the way I feel. No, this is God's heart for the church. The way these people exemplify the gospel. It's very important. So this, this I, I put this background. It, you should take a screenshot of this and read all the scriptures that line up to where Priscilla is today and why we're even talking about her. And also begin to map out your path. Right. One of the light bulb moments I put today on this slide, I'm not sure why it's not showing. Right. I want you to ask yourself, what what has been your journey so far? What has brought you where you are? Or even if you don't feel that you are the place where you need to be, right, because we're on a journey. What has been your journey so far? Where are you going? Right. It's very, very important for you to recognize this. Where are you going? Where are you going? Um, Dr. Fuqua, I don't know if I sent you the wrong slide. This, this wasn't in the original slide, but go on to the next slide. Let me see something. Let me see if I can pull for you the other slide, right? But I want, I want, I want you to take a moment. Just check your email. I'm going to send you the correct slide. I want you to take a moment. Ask yourself, what is your journey? I want you to type in the chat and tell me, what is your journey? Where are you going? Where, where have you been and where are you going? It's very, very important. I want you to ask yourself, where are you going? Where have you been, right? What has been your journey thus far? What has been your journey thus far? Uh, Dr. Kufu, check your email and see, because I have a different slide set. What has been your journey thus far? Or maybe I can open my own slide set. What has been your journey thus far? Where are you going? Where are you going? What has been your journey this far? Very, very important. I want you to ask yourself those questions. I want you to share with me in the chat. Where are you going? Someone says, will you share the slides with me, with us, please? Okay. Well, why I, while I haven't trademarked my, 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 my content, I'll share it with you, right? That's, that's fine. I can share it with you. That, I can share that with you. Okay. Um, just contact Dr. Kufu. She'll make it, she'll make it available to you. Um, that's fine. That's fine with me because I have the recordings public. So that's okay for you to have the content as well. Uh, let me see if I can, uh, Dr. Kufu, private message me how I share my screen so I can share it. Unless you have the correct one, just open it. Let's keep rolling. It's about 7.48, but there's some stuff I don't want you to miss, right? Uh, I sent you the new slide. You should have the new slide. Uh, let's, let's open it and keep it rolling. Where has your journeys uh, taken you, right? Where have your journeys brought you from? right? Where have you come from? Where do you see yourself going? Very important. Where have you come from? Where do you see yourself going? Okay. Can we have the slides or are we, are we still working on it? Where um, have you come from and where do you see yourself going? Sorry to interrupt. The, the slides you sent me are the same that you sent before. So it's okay. still the wrong slide. So if you can send me the... Okay. If you can... Okay. Um, you can as okay i can make you a host and then you can okay. okay make me a host please all right bear with me instagram she's going to make me a host so i can share my slides with you okay all right right don't don't uh, i apologize for that just bear with me i i have more slides to show you and i'll make it succinct we we can do all of priscilla today so i'm actually going to break it up and i'll share some stuff next week but i don't want you to miss today's stuff Okay, so uh, can you make me a, a host? Then I can share my screen. Unfortunately, okay. uh, Pastor Obi has to do that as well. So. Okay, I think I think you shared with me. I think you 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 gave me you gave me you gave okay. me. Okay, so there will be a green button on the bottom that says share. Okay, screen. okay, okay. All right. Let, Let me screen. share my screen with all of you. Okay, thank you for for bearing with me. I'm going to share my screen. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay. So share screen. While um, Dr. Rahel is doing that, if you can please send me your email so that we are able to uh, uh, email the PowerPoint to you, it will be fantastic. So please send me your emails. Can you, can you see the screen right now? Yes. Yes. So go is it to working? 
Yes, go to the okay. bottom of the screen. You will see something like an open book. Click on it. Where we're bottom right. You see something like an open book. Okay. Yeah. That's what you need to click. Perfect. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this is the picture I put. I'm not sure if you all saw it. Sorry, but this is what they used to make tents, right? Okay. And these were the eight things I said we're going to talk about, right? I talked about the fact that she was a woman. This is her background. And this is what I wanted you to share with me in the chat, right? What life journeys have brought you here, right? What life journeys have brought you here? I want to know what life journeys have brought you here. Because listen, everything you have been through is taking you somewhere. I'm telling you every single thing, the good, the bad, the messed up, the, the, the horrible mistakes you made, the perfect things you planned that didn't work out, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Amen. The next thing I want to show you is her marriage. How many of you are married in the chat? If you are not married, huh? this slide, you have to take a screenshot. Is very important. If you are not married, Instagram, I'll find a way to share these slides with you. If you are not married, number three, Priscilla's marriage, I want you to not miss this. The Bible says she was married to Aquila, Acts chapter 18, verse three. The guy was a devout Jew, Acts chapter 18, verse three. He was a devout Jew. He knew the Lord. It's important that you are equally yoked to the person you marry. Some of you see signs at the beginning. You ignore them. It's not everything you ignore. There are certain things you have to pay attention to them because certain things can become monsters years down the line. It's very important. The Bible says she was a devout Jew, Acts 18.3. I also noticed something that they had a singular purpose and a vision. The Bible says that they were both tent makers, they decided to relocate together. They move any, you know, you, you can't, you can't, even if two people get together to do something bad and they agree to do that bad thing, I, I am convinced they'll be able to do it. Th there is so much power in agreement. I, I don't think we realize, and I think that's why we treat marriage so trivially. I think we think it's, you, you just, it's just an opportunity to have somebody to just have sex with and just move on, right? And, 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 and that's part of marriage, right, in essence, but th that's only an aspect of marriage, right? The companionship, the camaraderie, right? And the, and the, and the, and the uh, what do you call it? The, the romantic love, the erotic love is there, right? But that's not, that's not the only thing, right? That's not, that's not the only thing. It's very, very, very important for you to recognize that. It's very important to, for you to recognize that, right? Um, for the person that sent me a request to join uh, my stream on Instagram, uh, because this is not a talk it out session uh, for today, I'm unable to allow you on screen. This is more of a teaching session, but God willing next week when we do our talk it out, hopefully we can bring you on screen. And so send us a message so that our administrators can review your request. God bless you so much, right? So they had a singular purpose and a vision. The Bible also says they were business partners. They used to make tents together. They moved together. They flowed together. Not only that, they had a ministry involvement together. Now, when I talk about these things of togetherness, I'm not saying that they wake up and then they, they, they drink from the same cup, right? So they wake up in the morning, right? Uh, uh, and then they, they make tea, they make Milo, right? Woody loves Milo, right? So they make Milo, the husband's lip is here, the wife's, I'm, I'm not talking about all those tacky stuff. I'm talking about something beyond what you see on Instagram. They had a purpose. They had an assignment. They meant business. They, they moved together as a couple, just like the word says, couple, right? When you couple something together, it's, it's together. You couple it together. You bond it together. So they moved with that mindset. They moved with that vision. And that's what allowed them to produce synergistic results. If one can chase a thousand, two can put to flight 10,000, right? This, if, if I'm putting together an event and I want to put together an event, that's great. Yeah, we know you, you want to put the event together, honey. You're more powerful when you work in a team because something you cannot do, another person is, is gifted to do that thing. There is power in union. There is power in unity, 
And that's the way they were moving. You have to make sure your vision is aligned to this person's vision. You have to ask them, what are you planning to do the next 10 years of your life? How do I fit in your vision? When I was going to, when Pastor Obi asked me out, right? He, he was wondering why I was behaving the way I did. You know, I, I said, please, what vision do you have? And what, what, how do I fit in your vision? Because for all I know, you don't have a vision. Maybe your vision is to control your flesh by having sex with me because you cannot control your flesh. So for you, I found a lady, not him, of course, I'm just saying this generally, right? I found a lady I love. Let me profess my love and go and burn my passions with this lady, right? After you've done all these things and you are satisfied, what do we do on Monday? What do we do on Tuesday? What do we do if we want to have kids? How do we raise our kids? What do we do in our careers, right? If we want to buy a home, right? What, what are your perspective on these things? Like, and you can tell when people are lying. You can, you, 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 and, and you, when you do these things, you challenge them to think because the marriage is not just about sex. You're going to live with this person. You're going to eat with this person. You're going to have kids with this person. This person, you're going to have kids with this person. You hate this person. Now you want to have kids with this person. You need to ask yourself. It's very important. Your children are going to be calling this person daddy and mommy, right? It's very important. Purpose, vision, partnership, alignment. Ministry. Ministry involvement doesn't mean he needs to be a, a pastor. You need to be a pastor's wife. I remember there was a time in New York where, where I lived. There was this culture where you, you, you were nothing if you were not a pastor in coat or a pastor's wife. You didn't have a bag and a shoe. And I'm not exactly sure who did the damage here, but it was a very damaging mindset. I noticed, and it, it was, it was prevalent in the African young circles, right? And, and I would look at some of these people and I said, this person would do well uh, 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 managing the welfare department of the church. This person would do well handling kids ministry in the church. What are they doing here? This person would do very well uh, 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 leading the youth, right? But it, it, it was a faulty construct. Most of us fell victims to it. It was a faulty construct which only upheld people that played certain roles and, and, and downplayed people that, that played roles that were considered menial. But listen, in the kingdom, that, that, that construct doesn't have a place. That's a faulty theology because we saw the place of Priscilla in Paul's ministry. We saw the place of Aquila in Paul's ministry. We saw the place of Apollos in Paul's ministry. We saw the place of Phoebe, Lydia, Dorcas, Susanna, Joanna. I'll talk about all these women for the rest of the year. Phoebe, Lydia, Dorcas, Joanna. These are New Testament women that played a role. So when I talk about ministry involvement for the person that's going to marry, please, I'm not saying you should go and pressure your husband to be, to be a pastor and lead a church. Honey, if they ain't called to that, you're going to kill the man. You're going to kill that man. It's hard to do these things. It's very hard. It's very hard to discipline yourself, to open the Bible and study, go and deliver a message, stand on the pulpit, and have people criticize you, right? It's very hard to pray. Most people don't pray. They tell other people, you pray for me. I won't pray. I'll be on Instagram when you're doing the prayer meeting, but you pray for me. It takes a lot. It takes a lot of discipline. These things are hard, right? Even though every believer should pray. But when you're in leadership in that capacity, it takes a lot. So don't just think about the limelight and the glory and push somebody out there to be something they're not, something they've not been called to do. It's very important. You're going to kill the person. You can do that. That's illegal behavior. You understand? So if you're not married, screenshot this slide. And this is a light bulb moment. Instagram, does your marriage have a vision? If not, what is your vision for marriage? If you're married, you probably want to really get with your spouse, right? Pastor B calls it the, the living room moment, right? You want to call y'all together and go into the living room. If you have one, every home has a living room. Or if you don't have one, make one, just put two chairs, sit there, even if it's an apartment and talk about your vision for the marriage, your vision for the home. After you have had sex, honey, this sex thing will last at the most 20 minutes, 25 minutes, right? I don't care how long. I don't care the tablets you take. I sell them in the pharmacy anyways. I don't care. They don't even last for that long. I don't care the, the kind of intimacy that the burning passion you must satisfy so bad that you cannot wait to get married. I get it. After you satisfy that burning passion, and then what? I want you to think about this. Now let's go to slide four. I'll leave this there another day. Maybe I can invite Pastor Obi for us to do justice to this section, right? The fourth thing I want you to notice is her character and her virtues. 
And I'm going to solicit your involvement for this slide, please. If you're in the chat, you're on Instagram, I'm going to honestly solicit your involvement for this part. The woman was teachable. You know how I know this? She was working with her husband, Aquila, and working with Paul. In our society today, the way they portray the modern woman as independent, as don't need nobody to survive, as boss lady, as don't, don't need to ask nobody no questions, as I got my degree, you can't do anything about it, I'm better than you, and that's it, hashtag better than you. It's very rare for you to find a woman that was able to work, number one, with her husband, number two, with a pastor. I've worked with leadership before. I've worked with different pastors. Please, I want to say this respectfully. It's not easy working with men of God because you have to understand they are men. They, they, they have a man side of them. When they leave those pulpits, sometimes you'll be exposed to their humanity. You'll be like, hey, pastor is like this. I didn't know. Pastor, pastor can eat like this in his home. Oh my God. Well, some of you go to people's homes, you see their humanity and you lose respect for them. That's why those of you that have the privilege to have access to leadership, you must be very careful. You don't, you don't develop a familiar spirit. That's why sometimes you can see somebody closest to the man of God, but that's the person that's never blessed. You know why? They've grown familiar to that person. They don't even value the thing the person, but they say, oh, don't worry, I, I, I hear every time, so it's fine. Then you see somebody that came from nowhere who comes in the honesty and the, and the hunger for the word and they are blessed. They receive a breakthrough, they receive a testimony and you are like, but I've always been around you and I know everything and I have access to this. Honey, it, it's not about access. It's about utilization management. You can have access to something you never use. I have access to so many things I've signed up for online. I've signed up to this program and that program and that portal and that portal. Honey, I don't remember the last time I even logged into some of them. So I can't go and make a case against the person that developed those softwares and say, I can't believe you sold me the software and I've not reaped anything from the software. You're not logging in. You're not using it. You're not opening it. That's not my problem. A lack of your utilization management is not a question of my anointing. A lack of your ability to recognize the place for you to use the things God has brought around you. That's not my problem. That's your problem. That's your problem. That's your decision. That's your familiarity issue. That's you undermining the work of the Holy Spirit in a chosen vessel. That's something you need to sort out at home. That's homework you need to do at home. It's very important. She was teachable. She was hospitable. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter, uh, first, uh, first Timothy, I think four, 2 Timothy 4, 16, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 19, Paul said, please greet for me, Priscilla. She always opened her home for us. She always opened her home for us. She always opened her home for us. So she was hospitable. She was given. She was hardworking. You know how I know this. Most of you are wives, so y'all know this. You, you have a husband, first of all. You have a pastor who's probably asking you to show up for, I'm always telling Dr. Kuhl, please, can you do the slides this way? Can you, can you come online? I'm, I've emailed you the slide. Can you do this? You have someone that's demanding so much of you, right? The pastor is asking you, can you show up for men's meeting? Can you show, you're not even a woman. Can you show up for women's meeting? You're not even a child. Can you show up for children's meeting? How many meetings do you want me to show up for, pastor? You want me to do everything in the church, right? You're demanding all these things from me. Then she has a husband at home. The Bible doesn't tell if she had kids, but imagine she had kids on top of all of these things. How many of you have kids? You have a kid, you have a husband, you have a pastor. You have to go and serve all these people. You must be hardworking. You must be effective with your time. You must be very effective with your time to manage your bit. Oh, and then she was a businesswoman too. So she had a business. You must be effective enough for you to combine these things. Time management. That's the, that, 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 that will be the cancer of our times. Time management. You see lovely woman, blessed, good career, has a home, has a husband, has a wife, has a business, doesn't know how to manage her time. We'll, we'll sleep till that kingdom come. We'll get up and waste all the time online. We'll, we'll, we are praying she's online. After we are finished praying, she's coming to you. You wonder, what are you doing with your time? Oh, I don't have time to pray. But you, you think we have time to pray and we should pray for you. So we that we are praying, where do you think we go and get the time? 
Do we go and buy time from Walmart to come and pray? Do we go, do we go and borrow time from, from the US government? They, they, they loan us time. So we, we have the same time you have. And, 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 and I want to say that some of us even have more things than you have to do. So you need to ask yourself why you cannot make time for the things that matter. I want, you, I want you to ask yourself, why can you not make time? If you are too busy to pray, please, you are too busy. Honestly, you need to begin to look at some of the things you can, you can, you can chop up. That's why you need to have a family meeting. You need to have a vision session in your, in your living room and ask yourself, if you and your husband can find five, 10 minutes to pray, Maybe one of you need to deactivate your Instagram and then you keep one and you can look at what's happening online through one person's account. It's very important. Whatever you got to do, you got to do what you got to do. Someone time, you got to do what you got to do. I'm telling you, a time is going to come. People are going to go and, and be upset at people, upset at the church, upset at God, upset at their leader and say, well, this didn't work for me and this is not fair. It worked for this person. You want to ask yourself the role you played because you have a role to play. And I know this message is harsh, right? But you need to hear it. You need to hear it because we, we can't keep doing, uh, uh, we, we, can't, we, can't, we can't keep lying to people, teaching about these people, making them look all glamorous and perfect and not teaching people what it takes for them to have the results these women had. It, this is not fair. This is not fair to the people that listen to us. It's not fair to the people that come to church. We're doing them a disservice. And, and sooner or later, they're going to hate us because nobody ever told them the truth. And the truth will set you free. You might not need deliverance. You might not need a, a corporate job. You need to know the truth. The truth will help you change your lifestyles, your habits, your thinking, your doing. And that's what will bring you the results you need. That's why some of these pastors are thriving, manipulating people because they know that people are ignorant. So they've, they've, they've developed a dependency culture. And when you come to these people, they don't tell you the truth. They teach you enough to keep you feeding on them without them helping you to develop behaviors and lifestyles that will help you embody the manifestation of what you've heard in preaching and teaching. She was effective. I want you to share with me three other things you think about Priscilla. I haven't heard of all she did in the New Testament church. Just, just share with me in the chat. What are some things you think she embodied. What are some traits for a woman to 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 be in this limelight? What can you perceive about this woman? What what, what, what do you think? If you can share with me in the chat, because clearly it, it's 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 a lot, right? Someone says she was intentional. I love that she was intentional. She was intentional. Eugenia, one of the things I've told myself in this season is that I'm going to be intentional. It's amazing to use that word. I said I'm going to be very intentional. When I wake up, I'm going to be intentional. I'm going to be so intentional that I will train my spirit and train my body and train my habits to be very intentional. And, and what happens when you're intentional, right? In a society that's not intentional and leaves the day to que sera, sera, and bring whatever it brings is that you, you, you challenge the status quo. So you either have people that buy into the intentionality that's giving you the result, or you have people that oppose the, the, the discipline that produces that intentionality. So that's what you're going to be having a war of two worlds. Someone said devoted. She was bold and honest. I love that. She was bold and honest. And you, you people are bold. Some of you, the, the resources you have, the way you are smart, we don't even have the degrees you have. We, 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 we don't. We, we, where you are, we, we are dying to be there. The, where you live, someone has a one bedroom, has built a studio doing the kingdom work. You live in a seven-bedroom house. All you do is sleep. You have a six-figure job. You can't buy a diary and schedule the rest. Of, I told someone to buy a diary for 2023. They looked at me like I was crazy. And I looked at this girl and I said, oh my God. She, I asked, I said, I said, I can buy you one, but I've made so much expenditure. I'm buying Bibles for people. I'm, you know, we are, we are, the Lord is helping us is, is all I can say when it comes to our finances, the Lord is helping us. Right. But I said, I would love to buy you this diary, but I even sent her the link. The, I, I think she thought I was crazy or something. And I looked at her and I said, wow, this is really interesting. And I said, if you cannot listen to me asking you to go and get this thing to help you put your life in order, how do you expect me that I have three children? 
I have a husband, we have a ministry. I should stop what I'm doing to come and help you. Clearly, you don't value what I bring. And in this season, one thing I'm learning is to be able to discern people that understand my value and people that don't. Honestly, it's very important. It, where we are going, we can't afford to do things anyhow. I, I don't know if this makes sense. We can't afford to do things anyhow. You are asking me to help you, but you won't follow what I'm teaching you to help you. But you want me to stop doing what I am doing and come and spend my time on you, but you won't listen to me. So you, you, you pretty much just want to waste my time. That's what you want to do. Not in this season. Someone said, not in this season. She embodied the Proverbs 31 characteristic. Now, he said, she, she embodied. And listen, I don't want you to be offended. In this season, don't take offense at anything. Jesus told John, blessed are you if you're not offended. Let me tell you, if someone does not tell you the truth, you wake up hating your pastor. People are going to wake up blaming the church very soon. Honestly, those of you that are ministers and leaders and preachers, the people are going to come after us. They're going to say, we've done them a disservice. Because we came and preached watered down gospels. We came and made things look perfect. We came and never taught them. We, we taught them that favor means you don't do anything. You sit there, somebody does the work and brings you the result. We taught them that you come to church, you receive something and you go home. We didn't teach them hard work. We didn't teach them a lifestyle of prayer. We didn't teach them consecration. We didn't teach them the place of they themselves playing a role. We didn't teach them that you give to receive. We told them it's okay. God understands. We, 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 we taught them they can take their money and go and buy albums from Beyonce, but they will never sponsor God's work. That's what we taught them because God is love. We, we taught them they can do anything anyhow and expect a good marriage. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Where from these teachings? Why are we teaching those things? We, we, we taught them, it's okay. Pastor, we will pray for you and it'll work. And, and in some sense, it's true. Because sometimes you reach a place where you're, you, you're so weak, right? There's a place for having people hold your hands. But honey, you can't tell me you have the time, you have the knowledge, you have teachings like this, you have access to people that are teaching these things and you are sitting there. You're kidding me. You are kidding me. You are K-I-D-D-I-N-G me. You are kidding me. You are joking. When you pray, you are joking. That's what you are doing. You are joking. And soon you will become a joke because you are joking. And you cannot afford to joke. You cannot afford to joke. You cannot afford to joke. You can't afford to joke. Honestly. That's why some people get upset later on. They say, well, I, I thought I was your friend and I, and I thought I was doing this. Honey, you ain't growing. You're not maturing. You think this thing is a joke. We're playing, yet we don't have anything to do. So we are just, we're wasting time. Twasu. I pray the Lord will really help us in this season. Honestly, it's very important because the time is nine. Number four, one thing I want to show you is her assignment in the church. She worked with and supported the apostle. Romans chapter 16, verse three. Some, Dr. Kufu, do me the favor and post that scripture for me. Romans 16, verse three. Romans 16, verse 3. The Bible says in Romans chapter 16, verse 3, it says, I ask you to greet my sister Phoebe, starting from verse 1. I want you to greet my sister Phoebe. I'm going to teach you about Phoebe in another session. I want you to greet my sister Phoebe. She's a deacon in the church. I ask you to receive Phoebe whenever she comes to minister to you guys. She is worthy of being received properly. Please. Help and support Phoebe's ministry as much as you can. Hey, Paul was endorsing a woman's ministry. Paul was endorsing a woman's ministry. Paul was endorsing a woman's ministry. That is why the church is not teaching right. They say the woman doesn't have a place in the church. Paul was endorsing a woman's ministry and said, receive this woman's ministry. Support Paul's min uh, uh, Phoebe's ministry. And he said, this is what I love. Help her in any way possible you can. Hey, help her in any possible way you can. She has been a benefactor for many people, including me, Apostle Paul. Hey, some of you have helped your pastors build ministries. <laughs> some of you have built, some of you have served in churches. They, they even thought the church was yours. The way you were serving there, they actually thought you were the pastor. Only for them to later realize that actually you, you, ain't, even, you ain't even ordained though. 
you were just a, a, a not just as if what you did was trivial, but in the sense that the, the way you were so involved and in supporting what the pastor was doing, people actually they even thought you were the pastor's the pastor's son. They, they even thought you were you were you were Doctor Kufu's sister. They they thought maybe me and Doctor Kufu were sisters. They they thought oh we all live in the same home. The way you supported other people's ministries, people people even think that it's your own ministry. Well, guess what? Romans 16 is for you years down the line, months down the line, decades down the line. She worked and supported the apostle. And then he said in Romans 16 verse 3, please, can you extend my greeting to Priscilla? Hey, can you extend my greeting to Priscilla? She is my co-worker in the gospel. Paul called a woman her co his co-worker. Hey, eradicate. He endorsed a woman's ministry and called a woman his co-worker in the ministry and said, this woman risked, she and her husband risked their lives for me, not only for me, but for the churches of the Gentile. Please let them know in my letters that I am so grateful to them. And please greet the entire church, the church that meets in Priscilla's house for service. Oh, Jesus. As many that are offering themselves for God's work, I pray that the blessing of the Lord will rest in your home. I pray that the ark of God will rest on your home. As the ark of the covenant rested in the house of Obedidon and he became a blessing, I pray that in your home there will be a blessing. I pray that as you give to support the gospel, whether in your finances, whether in your time, whether in your gift, whether in your talent, whether in your skill, whether in your whatever it is. If, if, if God bless you. I'm so thankful for you. I don't think you understand. Rudy, all of you, 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 you help us so much. You make this work bearable. You make this work bearable. Sometimes I, I go to a time I couldn't even keep up with my emails. Rudy said, why don't you let me help you? You need to outsource some of this thing to people that can help you. I appreciate you so much. God bless you. And all of you that help with your, some of you pray for us. Some of you encourage us. Sometimes we wake up, we, we are humans too. Sometimes we get discouraged. Some of you encourage us. You send messages of encouragement. Some of you give to support us. Some more, God bless you. Some of you support what we are doing financially. It goes a long way. It goes a long way. It goes a long way. Literally, it's taking me, today I took today off. It's taking me the whole day just to study this thing. The whole day, not eight hours, the whole day. And I said, if I had gone to work, I would have made so much money if I had taken a shift today. It took me the whole day to do this thing. And I'm still not done. I even told Pastor, you know what? I will, I will just pause after point number five and continue on next week. It took me the whole day to do this. Some of you are encouraging to us. Victoria, God bless you. You encourage us. That's how Paul said. Paul said, please greet Phoebe, greet Priscilla, greet Susanna, greet Joanna, greet Dorcas, greet Lydia. These people have helped me in my ministry. You ask why there are so many women in the church. This is the place of women in the church. It's unfortunate that these men of God have taken advantage of some of these women. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. But you know why? Because they have discerned the mystery of Romans 16. And the women themselves have not discerned the place of Romans 16 for them as women. That's why I'm passionate about what I do. Because we have to balance the books. We can't just have men teaching people wrong things and manipulating them. And we also can't have women disrespecting our men. We need to find a way to bridge this thing. Someone say bridge this thing. We need to bridge this gap. Clearly there's a knowledge gap, right? I don't know if this makes sense to someone, but I'll move on. She taught and mentored people. Acts 18 verse 16, she was a mentor. She mentored men. She mentored men. Yeah, women can mentor men. Yeah, not every man is married, though. So I can mentor a man, right? So if, if you're married, yes, the hus your husband is the head of your church, of, of your home. But your husband is not my head, okay? I hope this doesn't offend someone. Your husband is not my head. My husband is my head. And I have a head. And my head says I can teach. So when I go out there and I teach someone and I mentor someone, I'm not being disrespectful, Pastor Obi. I have a head. The head tells me in the home, you can do what you are doing. So if I come there, your husband is not my head. I'm not married to your husband. You are married to your husband. Your husband is your head. 
I can honor and respect your husband, but there's no way that tells me, there's no place that tells me I cannot teach him, especially if I'm teaching from the word. I can't go and tell him, I can't cross certain lines. Yes. But when it comes to the work of the ministry and my role as a teacher, yes, I can teach. Paul endorsed the woman's teaching and mentorship of Apollos. There's a place for that. She led cell groups and home ministry in her home. First Corinthians 16 verse 19. I want you to ask yourself, how are you leading and serving in your own church? How are you leading and serving in your own church? I want you to type in the chat. Everybody needs to tell me what they are doing in their local church. What if you're in this ministry, you identify with this ministry as your home church. I want you to share with me, what are you doing in your local church? How are you serving in your local ministry? I want you to share with me in the chat. Very, very important. Very important. And if you are looking to serve, you are looking to plug into a ministry, you don't have one, be in touch with us. If, especially if you're in the Dallas area. If you have a church and you're upset with the pastor and that's why you are coming to join us, please, please, please do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Let's get you healed. Let's get things sorted out. Let's do things properly. If you're already serving your man of God, your woman of God, please don't leave them hanging and come and join us. Please don't do that. Because we are all in the kingdom together. We are doing the same work. If you can't work with them, how can you work with us? But if you genuinely don't have a place or you feel that God is calling you to support, especially because of how virtual and digital this whole thing has become. If you really feel led in that aspect, be in touch with us because the Lord is leading us to pioneer movement in this city. And it will also require people like you because we cannot do it together. We cannot do it alone. Paul had all these people helping them. Dr. Kufu has put our email there. Make sure you email us or even text your name to Dr. Kufu. And I pray the Lord will bless you as you offer yourself for his word. I'm going to pause here because there's so much about this woman. I'm going to talk about the rest next week. If you are ready to hear next week's teachings, I want you to type in the chat. As we do these New Testament women, I'm going to switch gears. Some of you that have followed us from last day will be like, oh, why, is she, why is she talking that way? Why, why, is she, why is she blasting us? Why is she saying all those things? Because the Old Testament woman and the Old Testament dispensation and the Old Testament's position of these women is different from the energy and the vibe and the assignment of the New Testament woman. And I have to teach it in its honesty without any sugarcoating, without any, I have to, I have to open up the thing. We have to digest the thing raw. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it any other way, but the way it was done in the New Testament. I want you to know this thing. It, it's going to be very heavy and it's going to, it's going to be for people that have developed teeth over the last year. That's why I didn't start with Priscilla. We've been doing this for a year and change. I started off with Eve. I started off with Leah. I started off with Rachel. I started off with people that were insecure, people that were being tempted by snakes in the garden. I started off with people like Miriam that had problems with their siblings. I started off with people that couldn't find their place, Ruth, Moabites, people that were outcast. Now we are in Priscilla's and Dorcas's. These are, these are boss lady women. These are early church women. They pioneered great movements. These are people that understood their times, their seasons, their assignment. These are people that knew how to work with men. These are people that were not easily offended. They were matured. These are people that could manage a home, manage a marriage. These are people that meant business. And we mean business in this time. That's the things I'm going to teach you about as we go into the end of the year. And if this is too hard for you, just bear with me. It's going to sit well with you after you have sat on it for a while. These are some honest reflections I want everybody to do. And I'm going to do them myself. Because as I was writing them, me, myself, it was convicting me, myself. So just so you are wondering, this is not for you. It's also for me, myself. This is also for me, myself. I want you to ask yourself, do you feel frustrated by the role you've been assigned in the church, in your workplace, in your family, or in your community? Do you feel your gifts are insignificant compared to that of others? Right? Does your, your, work, your work feel repetitive or worthless to you in the grand scheme of your life or your world? What, what, do you, what would you really love to do when you look at your life right now? 
whether in the church, in your career, what, what, what would you really love to do? And one of the things I'm going to be launching in this season as the Lord leads me is my coaching and mentoring program, right? This is going to be an exclusive program. It's going to be a different aspect of this thing, right? Okay, this is going to be a, a, a full-time thing I'm going to be moving into. But, I, but I'm, not, I'm not just going to do this anyhow. The Lord is helping me build this thing properly, right? And these are some of the questions I'll be asking you when you come and talk to us. What do you really want to do? We need to know where you're at and where you need to be so that we can fill in the missing blanks in between. Does, do you simply assume your role is limited to your job instead of seeing yourself as a representative of the Lord wherever you are? Are you trying to do what I'm doing because you don't respect what you are doing? I need you just like you need me, right? I want you to think about these four questions. Dr. Kufu will send these questions to you. Think about these questions, okay? Think about these questions. Think about these questions, right? But I don't want to leave you hanging because someone might say, you, you press some buttons tonight and I'm upset and you let me hanging. I don't want you to be upset and I don't want you to leave you hanging. So I'm going to give you just one script. I'm not going to teach you. In, the way I'm going to also design some of my things, I'm not going to give you all the answers, right? I'm not going to give you all my, all my content, right? I'm not going to just, it takes me days to build some of these things, right? I'm going to share them with you, right? When, when God asked them to possess Canaan, they didn't, pro, they didn't possess it instantaneously. They possessed it progressively. And sometimes it's because you can't you can swallow meat. You can't just put meat in your mouth and swallow it. You need to chew it and masticate it so that you can get pieces of it. If I throw everything at you, some of you might not even come back again. Some of you might block me from your phone. I don't want you to block me because I really value your friendship. So I need to give you the thing little by little. This is the good news for you. If you are like me and you felt this way before in the four questions I give tonight, I want you to go home. Mildred said convicted. That, that makes two of us. So this homework is only for me and Mildred. The rest of you are not part of it. Mildred, me and you tonight, we will read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14 to 18. Only me and Mildred, because we're the only people that are convicted. Oh, okay. If we're, if we're, who is part of it. So only the three of us, the rest of you, please don't read this. Because I don't want you to, to if you are not convicted and this doesn't apply to you, don't, don't disturb yourself with something that you don't need to disturb yourself with. So Mildred, Dr. Kufu, and myself, 1 Corinthians 12, verse 14 to 18. This is our homework. The scripture says, Indeed, the body is one part, but many. So this body, right? This is my beautiful body you see here, right? All of you have beautiful body, by the way, okay? So just because I call myself beautiful doesn't mean you are beautiful. You just need to tell yourself you are beautiful. This beautiful body you see, Bible says it is one part, right? So I have one body. When I go and I board a plane, they don't, they don't ticket my arm, ticket my nose, ticket my breast, ticket my leg, they ticket one passenger. So the body is one. But here, here's the caveat. Don't miss this. Here's the caveat. He says, even though the body is one part, it also has many parts. Does that make sense? So you are one. So the church is one. Christ church is one. But there are many parts of it, right? There's one church, but there's a pastor. There's a pastor's wife. There's Bridget. There's Pastor Obi, there's Rudy that does the email, there's Beza who's helping us with our event planning for September 3rd, there's, there's our event manager, Sarah, right, there's a media man, Larry, right, there is our, our ever able moderator, Dr. Kufu, right, there is there are financial supporters, all of you that are giving in one way or the other, right? There, there is there are social media people, people that are making us videos, right? There is there is there is, there are so many different parts, but it's one church. So we don't call it Impact Larry, Impact Dr. Kufu, Impact Citadel Rudy. It's the same impact, but there are many parts, many functioning parts. And so the scripture says the body is one part. But at the same time, there are many parts Be and you cannot, you, the foot cannot say to the hand, because you are a hand, I don't need you or I don't belong to the body. If that were, if it is not for that reason, for that reason, no part of the body is less than any part of the body. If that were the case, the ear should tell the eye, I am more important than you. 
right? And so I don't belong to the body. I'm independent. I'm by myself. I'm a boss lady. I'm a boss chick. I'm better than everybody. He says, there's no such thing. It is, there's no such thing. He says, there is no part of the body that is less than any part of the body. If the whole body is an eye, if everybody was me, who would do the, the, the slides? I mean, I made the slides, but Dr. Kufu and everybody helped me to broadcast it, right? If everybody was Rudy, who would preach? If everybody was Pastor Obi, who will moderate? If everybody was Minister Kim, who will, who will take care of children in the children's ministry? If everybody is a medical doctor, who, 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 will bring, who will bring medicine when the patients are sick? If everybody is a nurse, who will sign off the doctor's orders? If everybody is a case manager, who, who, who will drive the ambulance to pick up people when they, are, when they call 911? So just because the doctor took care of a patient in the emergency room doesn't mean the one that picked up in the ambulance is not important. Are you kidding me? What kind of thinking is that? Me that I came, you, you called me, I, I came here, I picked you up, I took you to the hospital. Am I not also important? If I didn't bring you, how would the, the doctor be able to see you? I've worked in an inter, interdisciplinary team in a hospital before. So I have an appreciation for these things. In our team, we had a medical doctor. We had a director of pharmacy. I was the director. We had a case manager. We had a director of nursing. We had a CEO. We had a physical therapy. We had to, when we move, we move as a team. In fact, when one person is not on the team, we don't, we don't move. In the morning, we all come. We all high five each other. They say, pharmacist on board, I check in. Doctor on board, I check in. Someone checks in. Physician or uh, assistant on board, we check in. Uh, see a nurse on board, we check in. Case manager on board, we check in. Then we begin to move and we do so many things. We can execute from triage to treatment. The doctor diagnoses it. He asked me, what should we treat this person with? I tell them, let's do 20 milligrams of this drug. Let's monitor. I pass the patient to the nurse. The nurse monitors. The, we pass them to physical therapy. Physical therapy assesses them. We pass them to the case manager. We transfer them to another facility. By the time you know, all of us have managed the patients. It's amazing that the world understands this system, but the church doesn't. But this will be another teaching for another day. I'm going to leave you because it's almost 8.30 and most of you have family, you have children, you have to go and take care of them. So I don't want to take too much of your time. Okay. But I want you to understand that the Bible says in first Corinthians 12 verse 14 to 18, that every part of the body is important. Every part of the body is important. And the final part says, God has arranged each one of you to play your part in the body, just as he desires. So God desires for you to do what you are doing. I'm so excited. God desires for me to do what I'm doing. I want someone to type as you are going tonight. God is happy with what I am doing. God is happy with what I am doing. What you are doing for Impact Citadel, God is happy with it. It doesn't mean you won't grow. You will mature. You will learn how to work with other people. But God is happy with what you are doing. And as many of you that are fulfilling that assignment for your local church, God bless you. As many of you that are doing that for Impact Citadel, God bless you. For as many of you that desire to do this, God bless you. Our time is up, but I want you to register for our upcoming Women's Impartation Breakfast Meeting. It's going to be live in Dallas. I'm telling you, we have a whole team, again, talking about the body. I have a whole team of people that are planning this thing from the worship to the ushering, to the photo booth, to the merchandise table, to the t-shirt, to the media, to the uh, catering, to the venue, to the kids activities, to, I mean, we have a whole team. Can I, can I say that the people that are doing this is not important just because I'm the host? You're kidding me. They are very important. And all of you that are helping, we value you so much. God bless you. I want you to register. Do me a favor and register because these people are working hard. I don't want you to overwhelm them on that day. Register, fly down, come to Texas. If you have questions, Dr. Kufu is going to post the FAQ link, frequently asked questions. Some of you are asking, where can I stay? Who can host me? Who can pick me from the airport? What do I have to do? I want you to go to the website, www.drrahel.org. Go to events, click uh, a woman's impartation breakfast, click frequently asked questions. All the answers are there. If we didn't answer your question, Text Dr. Kufu, email us, leave us a message on the website, DM me on Instagram, and I'll try to answer your question if we have an answer to your question, okay? And then we also have our upcoming virtual conference 
August 26 to August 28. The theme is the complete woman, how to become emotionally, spiritually, and mentally complete. I don't want you to miss it. I need completeness in my life. I don't know if you need completeness, but if you do, I want you to show up. It's very important. Family, I'm so sad our time is up, uh, but someone just texted me that they have something to say, so I should allow Dr. Ekufu to give the floor five minutes. Uh, someone said they have a comment they want to make. Someone said they have a question. Dr. Ekufu, I'm going to hand over to you just five minutes real quick. Please, any comments, uh, any feedback, and we will continue part two, God willing, tomorrow. God willing, tomorrow, okay? Uh, sorry, God willing, next week, Monday. God willing, next week, Monday, okay? And so over to you, Dr. Ekufu. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Harrell. If you can uh, stop sharing your screen so that we can- Stop sharing, okay. Yeah, just press stop sharing. Thank you so, so, okay, so, I'll so stop much. Sharing. So um, again, I definitely enjoyed and was convicted by today. Um, and I'm sure a number of you do. So those, the person who wants to make the comments, please go ahead, you have the floor. We have five minutes and so we're gonna wrap things up. I have one special announcement and then, uh, we'll wrap things up. So the person who has the comment, if you can just raise your hand with the uh, emoji, uh, the reaction, sorry, and then I will call on you. Nobody? Okay, I guess the person is shy. In the interest of time, if you want to just put your comment or what you have to say, in the chat, we will appreciate that one as well. Can you hear me? Am I not loud? Is that what is happening? Or the person doesn't want to speak anymore? OK, so in the interest of time, if you can send it to me, we will say, uh, make your comments next week. Or you can email it to uh, info at drrahel.org, and we will make the comments uh, next week. Thank you so much for ladies for tuning in today. Today was a very, very interesting and insightful um, um, session. And I definitely learned a lot. I appreciate every single one of you for being here. And I uh, have one, one special announcement and hopefully it's going to be short. So tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tuesday, August 9th, um, Dr. Rahel is going to be holding a session at 9 p.m. GMT, 10 p.m. Uh, BST, 5 p.m. EST, 2 p.m. PT. It is titled Just One Hour with God, and it is presented by Church Graham. Please, please, please tune in. Look for Dr. Rahel's uh, Instagram and you for, for more mm -hmm. information. This is our special announcement. Dr. Rahel, do you have anything to add to that or? No, I, I, I didn't even have the flyer, so I don't know where you got it from. So I was a little don't worried. Worry, I'm I just saw Pastor Nisos message me. I wasn't paying attention. So I was wondering what was going on. Okay, yes. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so I, I believe that more details will be available on Dr. Rahel's Instagram. So if you have not following Dr. Rahel, please go ahead and follow her at Dr. Rahel uh, on Instagram. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I, I, I believe, yes, the information will be on Dr. Rahel's. For those of you in the chat asking, the information will be on Dr. Rahel's Instagram. So again, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Since, uh, since time is far spent, we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to ask Dr. Rahel to pray for us and then we will come back with a grace. And then again, if Dr. Rahel and I haven't said it enough, we have two major events coming. The first one is gonna be our virtual conference, The Complete Woman. Please, 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 please register. It is a free conference. It is virtual. Your, uh, your participation is greatly appreciated. We really, really, really want to come together as a, a, a group, as women with you know one accord, focused on being godly women, 
And this conference is going to be one to uh, uh, impart tools for us to be able to achieve that. There are many, many of us who have voids that we are trying to fill and we're not filling the voids because it's literally the void is a God-shaped void. And so um, um, this conference is going to provide the tools for us to be able to fill those voids. For those of us who just need our faith re revived, rejuvenated, it's going to be a great time. It is from August 26th to the 28th. Please, please, please register. The link is in the chat. The second big event, and this one is in person. I'm excited. I got my tickets. And if you need some cheap tickets, Southwest is doing some uh, um, uh, sales. But please join us September 3rd for the Women Impartation Breakfast. I am super, super excited about this. We have t-shirts made. I mean, the place is stunning. The decorations are going to be stunning. Please, please join us in person. I know some of you have asked and some of you are questioning, you know, whether it's, yes, it's going to be enjoyable. It's going to be fun, but also you are going to be filled by the spirit. It is not just, again, as Dr. Rahal said in this session, we are, we are starting to mean business. I mean, we were meaning business before, but we really need to crack open because the devil is attacking from all aspects. And if you are a surface Christian, is what my old pastor used to, a surface Christian, you are not going to be able to withstand these attacks. And so we need to delve deeper into this realm of spiritual enlightenment, of spiritual uh, 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 alignment with God. And so please, please, please join us. It is going to be a fun and engaging and an important time to help you with your spiritual journey. I thank you all so, 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 so much. And um, uh, there is, okay, there is a seven day fasting prayer dealing. Okay, so Dr. Raha said in the chat, there's a seven days of fasting and prayer dealing with de uh, demonic altars in our family bloodline. That is very important. There's so many, one of the, things in my family is broken marriages and we have to pray against all these demonic generational curses so please 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 do join in i understand a lot of you are busy i understand a lot of you have children but if you don't set aside time to really tune in plug in and pray we are not going to defeat the enemy there's there's no defeat without prayer so please 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 join us thank you so much I appreciate everybody. Dr. Rahal, if you can please close us in prayer and then we will say the grace and then we can be dismissed. Thank you ladies so, 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 so much. Absolutely, God bless you. What I was tapping there was that I was trying to tell you that that flyer that you showed, the church ground flyer, that's a program with Pastor Nisource Takia Boy um, who hosts uh, Church Graham. He, he normally goes live. He has a, a virtual church space. He's the pastor of Victory Bible Church, the youth uh, church in Ghana. Uh, most of you know, we hosted him here a few weeks in our, our home, actually, and I went live on him with him on the Woman of the Bible series. And so he's inviting me to his live stream because they're having a seven-day program and the theme is dealing with demonic altars and, and patterns in people's bloodline. They started today, actually. Maybe you can go on his chat and look at today's stream, but God willing, tomorrow, the Lord will have us go and minister. So the whole of tonight, I'm going to be in prayer prayerfully preparing for that event tomorrow and I'll post it uh I the reason why I was alarmed when Dr. Kufu posted it was because I I didn't know he had put out the flyer he told me he would text me but I think he messaged me while I was teaching so I I, I didn't know how to speak to it because I hadn't even seen the details of the time and everything and so my apologies thank you Dr. Kufu again talking about people that are all important in the kingdom she even got it before I did so thank you for that and so let's play uh, let's pray father we thank you for tonight uh, we honor you. Uh, we bless you, Lord, for all that you are doing in our lives. I thank you, Lord, for the revelation of who we are in the New Testament church. I thank you that we're not limited. I thank you that we're not cast down. I thank you that we're not destroyed. I thank you that we are not uh, left out. I thank you that we're not overlooked. I thank you that every single part of the body is important. I thank you for that reminder. I thank you for that realization. I thank you uh, that even though the world tries to uh, portray importance only for a certain group of people, I thank you that in your eyes, Lord, and before you, we are important, Lord, and in the days to come, when you come, we will receive our reward from you. We will receive our crown. You will give to each person according to the work that they did. In fact, you will test every person's work and woe unto those whose work 
may have stood in front of Instagram, stood in front of Zoom, but didn't stand in front of you. I pray that our service, our work, and our labor, and our sacrifice will stand the test of time when it goes through fire. Lord, I honor you. I bless you. I pray a special blessing for every woman on the line. I pray the blessing in their marriage. I pray the a blessing in their relationship. I pray a blessing in their finances. I pray a blessing in their home. I pray a blessing on their job. I pray a blessing over their bed as they sleep. I pray that you will fulfill the desires of their heart according to your will. And I pray that you perfect all that concerns them. Lord, I honor you and I thank you for all that you have done uh, even now and always. We give you the praise. We give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Have a wonderful night. Thank you all. We love you so much. Listen, if you are led to support our ministry financially, uh, make sure you visit our website and be a blessing to us and God will bless you. We'll meet tomorrow for the New Testament reading program at 9 a.m. And then we will meet tomorrow. Um, I think it's on the flyer uh, for Pastor Nisos's, uh program on Instagram as well. Thank you, Beza. Thank you, Eugenia, Mildred, Regina, Victoria, as many of you that joined, Pearl, Kim, Dr. Ami, uh, every single one of you, Kokui, uh, Pastor Obi, Bridget, Samuel, Global, Nanette, Naomi, Beza Walk, uh, Kelly, and I know some of you had to hop off because of your kids and your family. So we love you. God bless you and bye-bye.